I came outside this morning and the nest was knocked out of the tree and the baby birds were gone. They are missing into thin air. So something must have attacked and killed these birds. This is the exact place that I found their nest. I am actually going to go around the property right now, do a little bit of investigative work, see if we can find some sort of a culprit. And we're probably going to have to set traps and hopefully catch whatever stole and ate these birds. When you put any pressure just like that, bam, it snaps shut. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sprinkle just a couple of pellets right there. Oh my gosh. Okay, and the one trap, there's a creature. What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now for today's video guys, well, it is a little bit of an unfortunate one and one that it really has me scratching my head trying to figure out what in the heck happened here at my house. If you guys remember from just a couple of videos ago, even in the last video, I actually gave an update on the nesting birds inside of my tree. I showed you them when they were eggs and then I showed you them, I think it was last video or the video before that where they were starting to grow up. There was three of them and they had feathers. Well, unfortunately, I came outside this morning and the nest was knocked out of the tree. The leaf was ripped and the baby birds were gone. They are missing into thin air. So something must have attacked and killed these birds. I haven't touched it yet, but this is the exact place that I found their nest. So these birds were inside of here. There was three baby birds right there. Now, before we actually hop into our investigation today and try and figure out why and how these birds went missing, what got them, I wanna show you the last little bit of footage that I got of them right now. Guys, take a look at it. There's three little chicks in here. I mean, look at just how adorable they are. These are little red bull bull chicks and there are three of them here in this nest. They're having a good time. They're actually just starting to get feathered. So we're not gonna wanna disturb these guys too much. Oh my gosh, look at them. So they're staying nice and safe and tucked away in this tree. I mean, just how cute were these little birds and to think that they are now gone and missing and honestly, they probably were eaten by some sort of a predator overnight. The mom was in the nest last night. My sister checked on them. I mean, we've been checking on these birds every single day and to find the nest just like this it really is just so so sad this is just so so sad that these little birds are now missing and gone I mean there is not a trace of anything no blood no nothing so go comment down below a little prayer for them and go comment down below what animal do you think attacked them do you think it was a raccoon was it a possum was it a little fox I want to know what you guys think the nest was actually right here, sitting right here, and this entire leaf is ripped right there. You can see where it's been ripped, where maybe some sort of an animal smelt them, climbed up the tree and got them. But the good news is the parents are still around. I saw them just flying just a short bit ago, and when these birds actually have their babies, sometimes certain species of birds will lay several different clutches of eggs throughout their breeding season. And I can already see right here, I don't know if you can tell, but right there, just right there, you can see where they're starting to actually weave another nest already in just a couple of hours. Right there, they're starting to weave another nest. I mean, just look at this picture right here. This was one of the last photos that I actually took of them. And it really is just so, so sad to think that they are now gone and most likely been eaten. Now the nest is right here. No, 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 what are you doing, nest? I'm definitely going to be keeping this nest as a reminder of the cool birds. I mean, just look how amazing it is that these birds actually come and intricately weave this nest. Now the nest is a little bit shooken up. It's not as perfect as it was before because of this predator. But if we look, the nest was sitting about right there. I mean, there is no blood or anything here. You think if these birds were actually attacked and eaten on sight, that they would actually have blood all over here. When owning animals, especially here in South Florida, you have to be prepared for the worst. You have to be prepared for predators. Now we did not own these birds and they were an invasive species. So if you look at it from the standpoint of invasive species, it really isn't a bad thing that they were eaten, but I really love these birds. They were so, so beautiful. And to see them actually go missing, it is just so, so sad. So what are we going to do to solve this problem? Well, I am actually going to go around the property right now, around the backyard, do a little bit of investigative work see if we can find some sort of a culprit and we're probably going to have to set traps and hopefully catch whatever stole and ate these birds. But now we have to go on an investigation. I mean, it definitely could not have been this guy. This guy does not climb. I don't think it could have been Mr. Old Man Joe right here. Joseph, you need to tell me right now, did you, did you get those birds? No? Okay. Now, predator animals are actually pretty smart, so they actually know how to get in and out of areas pretty good. They don't want to take the long route. They know exactly what they're doing. So the tree is right there. That's the tree that the birds were in. And over here is the fence. So it is more than likely that the predator came from there to there and then ran out, or he came from here, or he came 
from there. The predator that came inside of this tree is not going to want to come from all the way over there because that's a long route. They're pretty smart and they're very sneaky, especially raccoons. If this is possibly a raccoon that did this, raccoons are very, very sneaky and know exactly what they're doing. So to start out, we're going to actually start off, I would say, we're going to start off over here. Now, it's pretty good that I actually don't have to worry about the rhino iguanas. I mean, this is nice chain link. That's what's good about it. And the reason why we actually put this mini mesh over the chain link is so is because of predators. We don't want raccoons to actually kind of stick their heads right there and try to, like, grab their feet at night and eat them. I mean, I have heard some just absolute horror stories of people's animals getting killed by raccoons, even aldabra tortoises. But anyways, this right here is where my Galapagos tortoise sleeps. Now, the predator probably is not going to bother him because he's about 70 pounds. They want to go for nice small animals and we actually put this right here We put this mini mesh right here to actually keep predators out and oh my gosh guys Guys Look at this my mini mesh has been ripped and pulled up and if you look look at this So I just noticed look you see there's plants 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 and then there's no plants and then there's missing mesh And I'm actually looking at the wood right now the wood looked like when they were trying to pull all this off right here. You can see that that's where the staples were and they actually pulled some of this off. Oh my gosh, guys. Guys, this is not good at all. I mean, this, I mean, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. This has to be where the predator got in. I mean, he was able to get through my mesh. Oh my goodness. So again, look right here. And you can see that right here in the wood that there's some sort of scratch marks. And you can see that that right there is where the staples were and they were able to actually pull this off. Now this is not one long consecutive piece. You can see that this is where we actually joined it. But we joined it right here. But this predator was able to pull this off and actually pull these plants away. Because you can see that there's no plants there. And you can see where there's just some grooves in the ground where this predator could have been digging. And then he was able to get a perfect escape route out that way. It seems as if we are dealing with a very sophisticated predator that actually thought this out was able to actually go to the fence line and pull the mesh away and get his way out of the fence. This is not good at all. And thank goodness that I bring Daisy and the new rescue duck in every night because there is no open top and there habitat is actually right next to where all of that was so this is so so good that they were inside because they could have also fallen victim to this predator so it seems as if we are actually going to have to set about two different traps we're going to have to set a trap over by the tree because that is ground zero for the problem and then i'm going to go set another trap over next to the fence it is time to whip out the trap so we have our handy traps right here for trapping all kinds of predators. So we have trap number one right here. These are the nice animal traps that I use to actually trap all kinds of predators. We've been able to catch all kinds of culprits with these traps. So I am certain that we are going to catch whatever stole these birds and ate them. We've got trap number two right here. We're gonna pull this one out. This one's a little bit bigger, I think. Let me put it up next to it. I think it's a little bit longer. Yeah, if you look up, oh, no, no, they're, they're exactly the same size. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to one by one take these traps over to the two different locations that we are going to set them and we're going to bait them with probably some cat food. A lot of these predators such as raccoons, possums, whatever it may be, they love cat food and will surely come inside of the trap. All right, we're here right now and we're over here at ground zero. This is the exact place where the little birds went missing, where they were knocked out of the nest and they were sadly taken away and most likely eaten and killed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load the trap. I've got a plate right here and I've got some cat food. This right here is some cat kibble and all sorts of animals like possums, raccoons, whatever it may be, they love cat food because it's very smelly and it really attracts the animals in. So we're gonna be setting two different traps. We're gonna set one right here and back over there by the fence where we saw the torn mesh. So now we're gonna actually rip this plate in half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rip each plate in half, pour cat food on it, and actually put it in the back of the trap. So to load this trap, basically what we're gonna do is we have to pull this right here up. When we pull that up, we push this down and pull it up. Then there is a tiny, tiny little lever right here that we have to push forward, which is going to load the trap. So the trap right now, as you can see, is nice and loaded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the food on the back end. Once this predator and animal smells the food, it's gonna make his way in. And there's this little ramp right here. Once any pressure is on the ramp, this is what happens. Take a look right here at the front end. 
When you put any pressure just like that, bam, it snaps shut and we are going to actually trap this predator. So now I'm gonna open the cage up. We're just gonna do that same exact thing again, but this time we're gonna put the food in. So we're gonna put our plate on the back side. And when I actually put the food in, I like to actually just pour it on the top. So we're gonna take that just like that and look, the trap is loaded. So most likely the animal was able to climb up through the tree. So we're gonna put it right here. And now I'm gonna take the food. And if you come right over here and look, Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sprinkle just a couple of pellets right there on top of the plate. Well, the plate, I shouldn't have even put a plate because the plate's not even working. We're just gonna sprinkle some pellets just like that. And now, as you can see, this thing is just full of pellets. The trap is set. Now we actually have to go and grab the other trap so we can set it. So hopefully we can catch whatever attacked and stole my little birds. Now that the first trap is set right over there, we have to set the second trap. I already have it set up right here. Oh my gosh, we have it set up. This is the trap right here. So the trap is set up literally right next to where this hole is. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna take just a couple pieces of this cat food. I wanna put a little bit right there. So if this predator decides to come back, he'll actually kind of come through here, he'll sniff the food. And then I just wanna put a little right here. I wanna put a little of the food in there. So once he smells and eats that, he'll smell more. And then eventually he's gonna make his way back to right there where all of the food is. And the same concept, the predator's gonna come in, He's gonna go on that ramp. Any sort of pressure right there is actually going to cause this trap to close. I also want to add right here that this is up against the fence and there is a lot of shade right here. So we don't have to worry about covering the cage up in the sun and cooking any animal that may get in there. And now that this trap is set right here, I will be back with all of you in the morning. We're gonna leave it for the afternoon and nighttime for these predators to come out, lurk about, and hopefully smell our food, get in the traps, and hopefully then we will catch the culprits that ate my birds. The next day. Good morning, good morning, my beautiful people. It is now time to go check the traps, and I'm just gonna do a quick glance right now. Oh. My. Gosh. Okay, and the one trap, there's a creature. And it's going crazy in there. Oh. Okay, 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 we gotta check the other trap. Oh my gosh. I honestly did not think we were gonna catch, oh my gosh, it's a cat. I hear it, I hear it. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely insane. So there's a cat in that trap, and there's another creature in this trap, something I didn't think we would catch, but guys, stop what you're doing, and go comment down below what you think is in, is, is in the other trap that's actually by the bird. Oh my gosh. Look at this. So we have, that appears to be my neighbor's evil cat that's been tormenting our yard. We have my iguana. And then there's a wild squirrel inside of the trap. This is absolutely insane. This squirrel right here looks he, like he's going absolutely crazy. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm not going to get too close because, you know, the last thing you want to do is get bit by a squirrel. Look at him. He's trying to bite me right now. Look at this little guy right here. So what I think could have possibly happened here is... Maybe the cat got up in the tree and knocked the nest down. And then maybe the iguana ate it. Because if you look at his mouth, there's actually a little bit of blood on Whoa, 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 buddy. Maybe the cat got up inside of this tree right here. And oh my gosh, you hear the parents? Those are the parent birds that are, that are talking right now. Do you hear them? That noise? That's the birds. Oh my gosh, the parents are here. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look, there's the parents right there. The parents are right there inside of the tree. Look at them. They're right there. Maybe the squirrel actually got up there, knocked the nest down, and got him out. But, oh my, okay, we don't, we, we, don't, we want the parents to continue building the nest in there. So we're just going to take this trap right here, and we're going to take it this way, away from the parents. Okay, come here. Oh my gosh, we got a squirrel. This is crazy. Okay, so we have the little squirrel right over there, and now we're actually headed over to my neighbor's cat. Now, unfortunately, we can't really do much about my neighbor's evil cat. He likes to get in cages and just all kinds of bad stuff. Guys, keep your cats inside, because... They cause destruction. Neighbor's cat, what are you doing here? If you guys have been watching the channel, you will know that this cat actually attacked and injured an iguana. It's knocked over iguana cages. It's just a bad, bad cat. What are you doing, cat? Cats are actually the worst invasive species, but unfortunately, there's not much that I can do besides literally let this. Goodbye, get out of here, go. Hey, get out of my yard, go, get out of here.
Well, the cat very well could have made his way through there. I'm not entirely sure, but at least we know we most likely caught the culprit, whether it was the cat or the squirrel, and maybe even the guana ate the little baby birds once they fell out of the nest. But what I do know is now we are actually going to go and grab this squirrel right here. We've got my neighbor's cat released, but now we have to deal with this squirrel right here. Squirrels are actually pretty bad because they can carry a lot of diseases, but a lot of times they're totally fine. This guy appears to be a young, healthy squirrel right here. Now we're not gonna touch him, but what we're gonna do with him is we're actually going to relocate him. We're actually going to take a drive down to a local rock pineland reserve where this little guy can actually live his life out in peace where he cannot terrorize my backyard and my animals. So we don't want him here right now, so we're going to take him right now over to the Rock Pineland Preserve, and we are going to release him there. And that, my friends, is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you guys did enjoy watching us catch the culprit that attacked my little birds, despite the circumstances. Guys, we're headed right now to go release this little squirrel at a Rock Pineland Preserve, where he can live out his life to the fullest. If you guys have not already, and you enjoyed today's video, we'll go right down below, give it a thumbs up, and go comment down below what you thought of this crazy adventure. Also, if it is your first time on the channel and you are not subscribed already, well, what are you waiting for? Go right down below, hit that subscribe button and tap that little notification bell and you will be notified whenever I post.